in the middle of watching this film, I thought to myself, nothing is really happening in this film. It's just kind of spinning its wheels. So why am I still watching this? Because one of my pet peeves is films that um, just don't seem to go anywhere or the kind of meander or they're relying too much on musical montages because they don't know what else to do. So why did I continue watching this one? Well, that's the topic for today's episode. This is the Kazdoy Closet. I'm Kazdoy, and that's my closet full of all the stuff that I love. And today, a film that relies heavily on the power of its two lead actors to be successful. Let's check it out. Today's film is Out of the Blue from 1980. It's about 90 minutes long in color. This one is about a young girl, she's 15, living in Vancouver, obsessed with Elvis and punk rock, and saddled with two very dysfunctional parents. Um, the main character, pictured here, is played by Linda Manns. She was so good in films like Days of Heaven and The Wanderers. I did an episode on The Wanderers, if you want to check that out. Uh, in this one, her character, she's very feisty, she's tough, aggressive, yet she has a vulnerability to her. She's also so energetic, constantly in movement. It's really something amazing to watch. Um, the first half of this film is really just her sort of kind of walking around in her life. Uh, she's uh, skipping school, she's smoking cigarettes, she's smoking weed, she uh, interacts a little bit with some schoolmates and, and, uh, and her mother and some strange characters in the town she lives in. She's running away from school and from home. Um, she's hitching rides, but she really is a victim of the circumstances she's in. Her father is played by Dennis Hopper, and uh, he's about to get out of jail after being in there for five years. I won't say why. I will say, though, before I forget, don't watch the trailer to this film. It gives away something too, way too much. Um, but he uh, shows up, for the most part, about halfway through the film, so about the 45 minute, part, uh, minute mark. And uh, he is a real haunted, troubled, and as we learn, depraved guy, very aggressive, alcoholic, real low life, really. And it's a great performance by Dennis Hopper. He and Linda Manns are both incredible in this, but for Dennis Hopper, I see this as sort of a precursor to his uh, later really unhinged roles like in River's Edge and Blue Velvet. Um, Dennis Hopper was also the director. There's a whole story behind this film that you can check out for yourself. If I went into it here, this episode would be twice as long. But the, he was just uh, hired as an actor to be in this film, but the director was not working out. The director, original director, got fired. So Dennis Hopper said, well, you know, don't scrap it. Let me look at it. And over the weekend, he rewrote the script and he became the director of this film. Uh, what happened was the film was originally intended as sort of a G-rated after, after school special. And under Dennis Hopper's uh, guidance, it became an X-rated film. Um, this was his first directing uh, effort in 10 years after a film called The Last Movie which was another notorious film, and studio executives wanted nothing to do with this guy whatsoever. But uh, he was also battling some personal demons, drug-related, in his, in his life when he was making this film. Uh, other people in here are really good. Sharon Farrell plays the, uh, his, uh, Dennis Hopper's wife, Linda Manz's mother. Um, Don Gordon is one of his low-life friends. He's really good. And then... Raymond Burr shows up in a couple of scenes, and he's always good, but he's sort of uh, acting on a much more traditional level than these other people in the film. Um, but it's Manns and Hopper who carry this film. Um, they just burn up the screen, and I think without the two of them in this film, it would not be nearly as successful as it is, or nearly as watchable as it is. As far as the style of this film goes, this has got a constantly moving camera. It's either a handheld camera or it's a steady cam. Almost a cinema verite flavor to some of it. And it almost feels improvisational, some of the dialogue in here. But the emotions are very raw 
and there's a lot of dark elements in this film, you know, theme-wise. Um, some people have said this could qualify as a film noir. I think you could argue for that. It has definitely has some seedy characters in here, some alienated people living on the outskirts of society, and really no escape from, from the lives they're living. Um, other people have also said this is sort of like the flip side or the dark side or a sequel to Easy Rider. I think that's a little bit of a stretch, but I do think one interesting thing to think about is, you know, if Easy Rider with the young people attracted to the, uh, the hippie movement, and then in 1980, we have young people attracted to the punk movement, which those two are so different. So it's interesting to think about how did it transition from the hippie movement to the punk movement, just food for thought. But, you know, this film, it's kind of hard. I don't want to say too much about what it's about because it's, it's really just a, these people's lives and I don't want to give away too much. But my rating for this is a four and a half school buses out of five. And I can't say why school buses, but like I said, avoid the trailer. Um, and again, without Hopper and Mans in this, it would have been not nearly as successful. Their final scenes together in this film are really effective, unforgettable, very powerful, very strong. And of course you have the title song Out of the Blue by Neil Young, who was friends with Dennis Hopper at the time. And after you watch this film, that song is gonna be in your head for about a week or so. So what's on this disc? There's a whole lot going on here. This is a Severn disc. So first of all, you have this, um, Great, I love this cover. And then you have the back cover. There's the back of Linda Mans with her Elvis jacket on. You have this really nice uh, slip cover. It's a kind of a, a sturdy one. And then you have three discs on here. One is a 4K, I don't have a 4K player. I have a 4K TV, but no player, so I couldn't watch it. But that has the film and some extras, including I think three commentaries, which of course I did not listen to because I couldn't. Um, then it has two Blu-ray discs. One is the film again with a bunch of extras. And then the third disc is a Blu-ray disc of just nothing but extras. There's, I think somebody said there's about 15 hours of extras on here altogether. There's a lot of stuff. There's an interview with Hopper. It's about an hour and a half. There are interviews with the, the guys behind this who restored this. There's a whole story there of how they had to restore this film and they do show some clips before the restoration it's night and day so it looks really good it's grainy but it's got a real gritty feel to it i like the look of it a lot and and uh, dennis hopper with his photo photographer background you can tell his compositions are very uh, artfully done in a lot of this film and uh, there's uh, interviews with uh, cast members with crew members with uh other filmmakers who are who are fans like uh, Ethan Hawke and Richard Linklater and it's just um, a lot of stuff on this disc or these two discs rather um, so where can you see out of the blue I have no idea I assume you'd be able to rent it somewhere I don't see it streaming anywhere that could always change of course you might try your local library I'd be surprised if they have it so uh, interesting film for sure so feel free to leave a comment or suggestion down below. Thank you once again to Michael and Tina for your wonderful comments. Uh, leave a thumbs up. Don't leave a thumbs down. <laughs> I almost messed that up, didn't I? Um, subscribe would be great. Share this with your friends and neighbors. New subscribers since our last episode. I don't know how you're gonna say it. A-W-A-T-E-K-Y-G-Y-A-L. Subscribe, thank you so much for subscribing. And uh, don't forget to uh, check us out on the Letterboxd app. There's a link down below, you can click on that. So you can see other films that I'm watching and stuff. And uh, we have a new person following us. Mig P is following us now on Letterboxd. Thank you for that. Otherwise, wow, thanks so much for watching this. Hope you like this episode. See you next time.